So now I'm going to talk about some statistical distributions. This is for my Economics 346 class. So normally I kind of focus on the ones that come up most in econometrics or statistics. There are a number of statistical distributions you'd see in a stats class. Some are continuous, some are discrete. Um, I personally like the Poisson, but uh, you don't see that as much when you do some basic statistics classes. So focusing here on the normal, the T and the F. And when you do econometrics, the T distribution gets uh, most of the attention. So anyway, I'm going to just do some examples with this. The point today is to do three things. One, we're going to generate some data, and we're going to look at these distributions. We're also going to see what the data look like and how those uh, plots, what they represent. But we're also finally going to look at some how we've been using some coding and data visualization principles. We're going to continue to use those through there. So when I do things, you can see that it uses things I've used before. So again, I've already talked in order about um, data visualization and, and about some basic R commands. And so I use those, you can see as we go. And then by changing those, it's a lot easier to, to change one or two lines of code or even one character, and then you can get a whole new answer without having to redo everything. And that's kind of the point. Um, and also, you can kind of see how, um, you know, you can save a little bit of time as you go and, and uh, be able to work a little bit more easy. So here we're going to go, I'm going to start here, I'm going to make a million random observations. I'm going to start with the normal distribution. Here you have to choose the mean and the standard deviation, so I'm sticking pretty standard, zero mean, standard deviation of one, and I'm kind of renaming it, I'm making N1, but then I rename it down here so that we can literally just copy the code and reuse it and only have to change like one thing. So that's, that makes it a lot easier to do a lot of this stuff. So I kind of go through more things than normal if using other software uh, because I can just copy and paste and redo it exactly. So this is what you do. Our norm is going to generate according to the normal distribution 1 million observations mean standard deviation. Remember notice it's separated by commas and I'm going to run that. And then you can see here that it's got a million elements and it appears over here. And I just here I s select 50 randomly in the middle. I just kind of made up some numbers, but it has a length of 50. You can kind of see here. Now, if you copy this and you do this on your own, it's it's nor it's random. Okay, you're never going to get the same numbers. This is generated different times, and you can do things like set a seed and some stuff like that. But I'm not. It's literally just it works whatever you do. So my numbers look like this right now, and if I redo it, they'll be different. But look how a lot of them are kind of close to zero, and some of them are a little bit further away, but none are really huge, right? There's nothing more than two here, right? That's pretty rare. Uh, although you'll find them in there, and that's kind of the point. How likely are you going to find the number two or negative two? Here's one actually, but it's rare. All right, and again, this is kind of a random sample, but like we're looking for these outliers. We're looking for the rare occurrences, and that's what when we get into hypothesis testing, that's kind of the point. So most of the numbers are right into the zero, one and a half, maybe two range, and you're hard, it's hard to find other ones. All right. So anyway, I'm going to call it norm D, you know, normal distribution. And then again, if I I can make everything else uses norm D, so if I want to make another distribution, I can just make N2 or N3, and as long as I rename it, the code below works. So I just rename it, it's exactly the same. Now I'm going to do a plot a histogram, which I've talked about before, and I'm going to do it with 100 bins. So I take norm D, make a histogram, and the command here is make the histogram of norm D with 100, and you look here, and it looks like the standard normal distribution you've seen. Now this is actually the number of observations, and I'm going to change that later. This is the default settings and fonts and everything. This is what it looks like. You can see all these narrow boxes. This has that bell-shaped curve people have seen. If I do it with a thousand bins, it might be a little bit smoother. Breaks it down even more. And this is black because the lines around the boxes are really close together because the boxes are really small, right? There's a thousand of them squished together. But this is clearly that shape. You can see this is a little bit higher over here right now. It's because this is generated data and it's not exactly perfect. It's going to be a little bit off here or there. But according to the law of lo large numbers, it's going to average out, right? So, in the stats book, you've seen the 10% critical value, 5%, 1%, um, and you've seen, you know, one thing you know is that half, this adds up to one, so half the density is on the left and half is on the right, and then if you take a little smaller slices, you get greater than one, for example, it's a tinier slice greater, that's going to be, a, we're going to calculate the threshold, but it's going to be a smaller and smaller percentage to each side. So here, if, if I do this, I'm going to call it Q1. I'm going to generate that number. It makes this object here, but what it is, and I'll call the object. But here's the quantile. This is the command to get the median, which is the 50% quantile, and then the, any one you choose, right? So I could do any quantile I want, but I'm sticking with the standard ones. Throw in 25% uh, here, um, right here, and then I've got 75%, which isn't really used much. Uh, 
And then I've got 90, 95. This is the two and a half percentile, because again, if you do a two-sided test, it's 5% critical value, but I've got to divide by two. And then this is the 1% critical value, all right? Now, which I'm not going to use too much. And, and so that's why I don't have 0.995, uh, for example. So here I'm going to call it, and I'm going to make this. And you can see these are the values you might have seen. Now, I'm going to round it to three digits. It makes, makes it look a little bit better. But in the textbook, we know, right? 10% critical value, right, which is 5, you divide by 2, this is 1.65 for 1.645. Notice that they're not the same on each side, because again, the data are randomly generated, but it's close, right? 1.96, 1.96, and those are the ones you've seen in the book. We talk about two standard deviations, well, that's the, it's actually 1.96, and you can see that these are the values we're looking for. So the quantiles will give you those thresholds, like how far from the median for the mean, excuse me, that you have to be to be in a low probability area. So we're going to find here values that exceed 0.975. Okay, so I'm going to take the length of Q1, and I don't have to do this. I, I just the question, how can you skip this step? Because sometimes students will actually count the rows and then they'll write it down and they'll plug it in. I don't advocate that because what happens if you have a slightly different data set? This is the better way to do it. I'll show you below. So I'm going to take this norm D, which is our this what we plotted here. We're going to say which of those is greater than the tenth value here. So of 11, this one's the tenth. So what's greater than 0.975? And this is going to be a huge list of numbers. Notice, all of them are greater than 0 0.96. So these are all the really high ones. And again, on the probability distribution, there's not much probability of being higher than that. right? So we can say, oh, how many are there? How do I count them? And again, in R, you just take the length of it. You say, like, I know there's a bunch. And you can see there's 1,000 printed and 24,000 not printed. And if you do that, you can say, well, 25,000. Well, that's a really, really round number. Well, that's because it's exactly generated. We had a million observations. That's 2.5% of our observations are above the 2.5% value. It's not a coincidence. What if I want to do something? This is not a percentile. This is the value 1.15, which is somewhere in here. It's not half. It's not 2.5%. It's going to be something in between. We can actually figure that out. We can say, well, take the length of this. In norm D, which of them is and this is just the value. This is not the quantile. This is the value. Which of these is greater than that? All right. Now you can do it step by step. This would return a list. This would tell you the numbers in the list. Right. This will say like what that what rank order. You know, this is the first or the ninth or whatever. This will say like norm D1, norm D9, which are numbers that we generated. And then the length of this is just all of them together, how long it is. Do it by 100 and divide by the length of everything, which is a million, and you get a percentage. 12.46% is in there. And again, it'll match a textbook more or less. And again, the law of large numbers says with enough observations, it will match perfectly. All right. What about how many are less than zero? All right. And again, here's zero. Well, we know it's going to be half. All right. And again, it's a little bit off just because of the randomness, but it's, it's half. All right. So that again, this will tell us of the thing we generated, how many of those are less than zero? Okay. And, and turn it into a percentage, right? With, with uh, take 100 and divide by the length. All right now here I, I would just plot it more nicely axes titles extra lines and if you look here I take the histogram same thing here a probability equals true says don't do it as a frequency do it as a probability x label I'm going to change to value main I'm going to call it normal distribution I'm also going to add vertical lines at those critical values here and then I'm going to add a legend which I had not done before and I'm going to do it first at the top right and it's going to be over here and it's going to have this phrase so the legend what to put in there is this in quotes line type 2 is dashes which matches here right so there's a dash line and the colors match so it's like basically drawing attention to the same line I'm going to do it in a white box color cuz I don't want the little uh, border on it if I do this See, then I'll, it just changes the things that I said I was going to change. Gives it a title, gives it value, and so forth. All right, so it's a one way to do it more nicely. Now, again, I'm going to repeat this. All I had to do was just make change the things here, call it N2. Change and say, well, norm D, everything says norm D. I'm not going to replace all of these. So all I do is say, keep this. But my, what I call norm D is the new thing I'm doing. And what this is here is same million observations, new mean is 10, and new standard deviation of 35. Okay, and so it's going to look different. It's going to be shifted. It's going to be a little bit stretched, although plotting-wise it might look the same. But if we plot it like this, you can see it's shifted over because the mean is now higher. It's going to be 10. And look how the cutoffs are now more than 35. 
right? And so, um, you know, this, this is a 10 plus about 70, so about 80 it's going to be here, and then about negative 60 here, which is plus or minus, you know, 1.96 standard deviations. Okay, so again, you can change it, you can plot it. Now, you're not really going to plot it um, for this purpose, but this kind of gets a sense of which numbers you'll find over here. Those are the exceedingly high ones that we calculated. You can also imagine that, you know, this adds up to 100 with half above and below, um, and then over here it's an even smaller number. All right, now in economics we use a t-distribution, which again is, is slightly different. It uses something called degrees of freedom, and that actually is going to matter. We're going to change those here. Um, but it's used for empirical data, and it's, it looks like the normal distribution, but it's a little less accurate, um, and it depends on your sample size and some other things. So I'm going to call it td, right? instead of norm d, it's td. And again, I made up 25 uh, standard excuse me, 25 degrees of freedom. All right, and so to make that, I'm going to generate it, and then I'm going to do the histogram. And again, I'm plotting it the same way as I did before. And I'm going to have to call it the T distribution here. And see, again, I did a couple of changes here and there, but all the stuff that you would have to change a million times, right, all of this is pretty much standard. All right, so this is the T distribution. And you can see here that it, it is looks pretty much the same, bell-shaped. Uh, you know, shape to it, and it's got the same kind of like, you know, higher numbers, higher than two. Now, this didn't ask for mean and standard deviation, it just there's a default that I just didn't change it. When you make it an R, it centralizes it, but so I left it that way. But I'm going to add the vertical lines, and I'm going to add a legend, all right, and then I've got here, and you can see here, this is one really important thing that the cutoff is now, it, remember, it's not 1.96, it's actually a tiny bit higher than two. And that has an absolute value, right? So a little less than negative 2, a little higher than 2. That has to do with the fact that there's a, a pretty small number of degrees of freedom. In other words, your T statistic changes with your sample size. Small samples will need a higher burden of proof to, to kind of uh, reject a null hypothesis. Um, so look, this here, you can eyeball it. You can say, OK, it's going to be a little bigger than 2. Do the thing here, and you can actually see it's, it's 2.05. 2.06. So it is actually a little bit off. Now, if you change the degrees of freedom, you actually get, um, you know, I'm going to do 250. You're going to get a, a converge to the normal distribution. The only thing I did, and I, ch I just left TD2 here, so I'm going to rename TD2. No, I have TD, I call it TD2, and I did actually change it in here. Um, I'm going to do it with 250 degrees of freedom. All right, and uh, there's more degrees of freedom you're going to see here that this is a little bit closer to 1.96. And as it approaches infinity, the T distribution does actually uh, approach the normal distribution. Now, notice how this is bumping in here. So right now, I'm actually going to change my legend. All right, I could change it to the top right if I want to. So again, if I don't like it, I can play around here, but I'm going to leave it for now. One thing I, I like to do is I can zoom. Zoom in, it looks fine. All right. Uh, so anyway, th that gives us the T distribution. Now, the assignment for lab is to generate a million again, but with 2,500 degrees of freedom. All right. So what happens there and what happens to the critical values? Compare them to one normal and two D T distributions that were done here. All right. So that's the assignment. All right. Now, one more thing, the F distribution, which again is, is related to multiple distributions. So it actually has two degrees of freedom in there. All right, so this is, I generate one with a thousand observations, all right, and five and 50 degrees of freedom. All right, so call it F, and then I do it myself with F1, right? So I could do it with other things too. Um, and I'll leave that for like a bonus assignment, right? You can change it to 50. What's it going to look like? But if you just have this, right, this actually is going to have a different shape depending on the numbers you put here, right? So I might generate F values, and I'm going to do 100. Um, excuse me, a thousand here, and those are the degrees of freedom. I'm going to do a histogram with a hundred bins. I'm going to show probabilities. Everything is the same as before, only I'm going to retitle it. And then, and because it's a one-sided test, it's, it actually starts at zero and radiates out, which we'll see. You know, I'm only going to do a one-sided test with, at 95%, and I'm going to add a legend as well. All right, and I change the stuff in there to match it. Right? So it starts out like a hump shape that goes here, and then you can see over here, this is the 5% fi critical value here. And then these are the extremely large values. Right? Most of them are between 0, 2, 2 and a half. They're extreme values. So again, you're, when we do hypothesis testing, you'll see that uh, you're looking for the values that are higher than you would expect. And this is how we find the cutoff for what constitutes a high value, and then we can figure out that they're extreme in one sense or another. Right. So that's kind of the point today. Now, now walking through here, I use a lot of R code I've talked about before. So always think about this: how, like in here, I, I mentioned this before. Right here, I say probs for one. Here, I just put the number. But what if I want two numbers? 
I put a set of probabilities as a combination of two numbers. So this says I want two probabilities. They have to be grouped together. I don't just write two comma or one comma two or something like that. I actually put them in a group like this. So again, I'm using the R language, right? So if I do this, I'm like for example, let's look at this line. You've got um, all sorts of stuff with uh, like for example an AB line, right? Which is going to draw a line on here, and then you've got V is vertical. All right, and since I'm going to draw a vertical line, well, where I'm going to pick a number. This is saying what number to put in. I could put I could put three, right? It would draw it at three, but here this is actually saying this finds it for me, quantile, right? And this says find me the quantile line. This is going to draw two lines at once, the numbers that matched what I have down here somewhere, okay? And so I could just type in the number, but this is saying like find the exact number that has economic significance. So draw me two lines grouped together, and they're the two lines that match this formula, which are those two cutups I made. Okay, so that's my AB line, and because we can customize in R, keep in mind I can pick the color and I can pick the line type. I could also change LWD as line width. I didn't do that, but you can make a thicker line, a different color line, and so forth. All of this does that here. The new thing that I did say was the legend, which is where to put the legend, what to type for the legend in quotes, and then how to make the legend look nice. Right? But all of these things use the R language to do it. But what I did was I could immediately, in just like two lines of code, change one number. Right? And, I, and I'm, I'm, let me do it right now. So if I say, like, um, I want to have uh, this, right? a million observations, I want a mean of 100. And I want a standard deviation of 120. All right? And I do all this. All right, now this is the, the longer version here. All right, um, then I can go and run it all again. But I just want to do the histogram. All right, so uh, something like this. All right, it runs it all again, and you can see here that the mean is around 100, and 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 the standard deviation is accordingly right, so around uh, you know 340 or so, depending on how I did it. So anyway, I can repeat it with just one line. Right now, I'm back to where I started. I just control Z it out. No problem. It doesn't even ask me to save it, but I completely did the whole thing over in like five seconds. Right? That's kind of the point. But as we go, we're sort of recapping and reviewing some of these concepts, like how to type it, how R recognizes it, and how you can take the idea that you have into making it happen on the screen. And so we looked at these three main distributions. We were able to figure out how things look and how the data match. And then we were able to plot some critical values, thinking about critical values. And then we'll be able to use that for some hypothesis testing.